Hello everybody and welcome to another quick Dwarf Fortress tutorial. In this video I'm going to be covering managers and the work orders screen. These are two screens that somehow I never managed to cover in my previous tutorials, so we're finally getting to it. It's a screen that starts off by clicking on the N hotkey down in the bottom left of the screen, or by clicking on this little crown. So you can either hit N on the keyboard or you can hit this little crown. Then what you're going to do is you're going to assign a manager. This is a role that is available from the very beginning of a fortress. Now what this manager does is they are going to organize the fortress for you and organize orders. It's it's also useful to have a bookkeeper and a broker appointed. The bookkeeper will give you access to your full inventory and exact numbers up here, and the broker is your primary trading dwarf. I like to have the three assigned to the same thing. They also need an office assigned, same as the manager, meaning all three of these kind of work together as a useful starting job. So as you can see, I have this dwarf up here, Kazmir Goat set up as our broker already. We're going to add them as well as our manager. So now that I've clicked on this little plus symbol and added them as a manager, they already have an office assigned, but it's very easy to do. In order to assign an office for a dwarf, all you have to do is place a chair. Of course, if you do not know how to make a chair or a table, they can be made at a carpenter shop, a metalsmith shop, a stonecutter shop, any kind of basic construction job has their own variations of a chair and a table. It's one of the first things that I make at my first masonry shop once it's built. Now that the chair and table have been placed, we're going to hit Z on the keyboard. This is this little button down here. Place zones to establish a meeting areas, pastures, and more. We're going to click on that, and then we're going to click on the office zone. An office or study is required for certain official tasks, such as approving work orders and bookkeeping. And a, a chair or throne is required for these functions. So you want the chair or throne here in place. Now, once you have placed this zone, you can accept it, and then you're going to click on this little plus key up here. Now, we're going to click on the mayor, who is Kashmir Ghost here, who's also set up as our manager, our broke keeper, and our numbers dwarf. Now that they've been assigned to this office, we can look here and see that, well, they have this manager job. What we now have the ability to do is they will count and keep track of our inventory, and we also have access to a new screen. So if we click on any of the little options down here, there's a tab here. It says work orders. There are no active work orders. This allows us to automate jobs for our fortress. This allows us to make sure that jobs get done when we need them. So let's show you some examples. One of the first things that I always set up is a process plants job, which automatically processes plants at the farmer's workshop into thread. Then that thread can be spun into cloth at a loom. But let's do something a little bit simpler, such as rock throne. Now, as you can see, it says make rock throne. It gives us the option to select how many workshops. Now, in this fortress, we have a good number of workshops, and they will then be assigned. This job will then be assigned to every single one of those workshops. I can increase or decrease the number of workshops maximum. So if it's a lower priority task, we only want two workshops doing it. I can set it to two workshops max. If it's a higher priority job, we could just let all of them do it. Now, over here, we can select the quantity that we want. And over here on the right side is everybody's favorite thing. This allows us to select the amount of thrones that we create if we start to run out of something. So let's say we want to make more thrones when we run out of already constructed runs. Well, it says to make 10 there. So it'll make 10. And then we could set it that if the number of thrones is less than 20, then they will make 10. We can also set it so they'll only do it if the right type of rock is available. In fact, I could set it so that only specific types of rock are available. Then while it's in this screen, we can also click on this clock. We can tell them to check it monthly. We can tell them to check it seasonally. We can tell them to check it yearly or daily. Or uh, if completed, it'll check daily, which is the default. So the most frequent is if completed, check daily. If completed, check monthly. And restarts if completed, check seasonally and yearly. So this will is essentially an automated order to create rock thrones. But I don't really want to automate the order to create rock thrones. What I really want is I just want those thrones. So let's see this in action. If I unpause the game, we'll see our manager come booking up here and they will sit at this throne and they will assign those orders. So here comes our manager, or in this case, the mayor. They're conducting a meeting. We'll let them finish that real quick. So now, as you can see, they have the job that says manage work orders. Manage work orders means that they are now assigning this job to all of my stonecutter shops. So if I scroll down to where my stonecutter shops are on this in this fortress, we can see there will soon be a job popping up here. As soon as there are items available for this job, boom, make rock throne. This saves you a lot of tedium. 
And this is available for literally every workshop in the game. Everything from your smelters, to your still, to your farmer's workshops, any job that you could think you could automate it. Now, another thing that you can do is within the carpenter's workshop, I might want to make some beds, right? Maybe I just want to do it at this specific workshop, and I want to be very particular about this workshop. Well, what I can do is I can click on work orders, and then I can click on this little plus symbol, and I can tell it to make a bed. And then I can give it a number of beds to make at this specific workshop. Let's say 15 beds, just as an example. I could also still add conditions. So make 15 beds when the number of beds left is less than 10. And let's say, let's make it only if there is enough logs that we won't run out. So only if there's enough logs that left and only if the number of beds that we currently have constructed are less than 10 will this function. Then we can of course jump back to our mayor who is currently assigned as our manager and they will go manage the work orders again. This is gonna have them running all the way back to their office and then over to their table and chair and finishing the work order. Once they've completed it, it'll then pop up down at this workshop, just as before. And just like that, you can see the make bed job has appeared. And this is going to repeat until this work order runs out. And then it will re-up once the work order is needed again. This can be done for literally anything in the game. So, automate your jobs, check out your manager screen, and do your best to make the game as non-tedious as possible using this mechanic. And also, as your manager gains skill, they will get better at this, and more efficient at this, and quicker at this. They'll also get enjoyment from it. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found this tutorial helpful, please leave a like on the video. And if you want to see more videos like this, check out this playlist. There's a huge one. I also have a massive kind of all-encompassing video of all of the videos I made this past year uh, in tutorial format. It's like seven hours long. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.